If you're looking to prepare for 2021 because you felt unprepared for 2020, you're going to want to stick around and listen to this. I'm talking about the five things you need to be aware of in order to prepare properly for 2021. Remember to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this out on as many platforms as possible, and consider going to benjosephstewart.com and signing up for the email list because you'll get a bunch of free tips and info about how to awaken in the coming world. Stick around for a deep dive right here on Waking Infinity News. Welcome back to Waking Infinity News. I'm your host, Ben Stewart. And today we're doing a deep dive on the five things you need to be aware of in order to properly prepare for 2021. Okay, so 2020 hit most of us out of the blue. It took us by storm. The reason I say most of us is because if you check out my earlier programs, you'll realize that there are many people that knew what was right around the corner in 2020. If you actually follow stocks, there are people who have been predicting a 2020 crash for a long time. But beyond that, for the average people who are simply looking to get along in the world, if you want to know how to prepare for 2021, please listen. We got five things that you're going to need to really pay attention to. Number one, economic reset. If you truly don't believe that the current pandemic is at least being used as an impetus for a decades old agenda, at least decades old, to use this whole idea of climate change, we are the perpetrators, we're destroying our own planet, we don't know what to do with all this beautiful bounty, so we need to give it up to all the rich elites so they can come in with the perfect solution to save us all from our own destruction then you probably haven't watched Esoteric Agenda 1, which came out in 2008. Now, remember, if you go back to Gaia.com forward slash Ben, and you can actually go and check out Esoteric Agenda, you can check out Chimatica, Ungrip, Waking Infinity, Psychedelica, Limitless, everything that I do, except for the most recent things, are on Gaia. And you're going to want to go and check that out because in 2008, before there were even smartphones and this whole idea of the smart grid, we were talking about Agenda 21. And that is what primarily this entire idea of an economic or great reset is all about. It's all about talking about how we are destroying the planet and we need for this brand new economy, we need all this technology to come in and trace and track us, put us under what is basically a social credit system so the rich, wealthy technocrats can keep an eye on us and in a sense dock our social credits if we go to the wrong protest or we show up at the wrong bar or we hang out with the wrong people or if you watch the last season of Westworld, your entire life is basically bet on by Goldman Sachs and quite a few other major hedge fund companies that are saying, this is Joe over here. Joe's not going to make it far, so we're only going to make sure that these jobs open up for Joe. Susie, well, Susie has a great head on her shoulder. And by the way, great genetics comes from the right family. We're going to open up these schools and all these opportunities for Susie. And literally, in the real world, not in Westworld, in this world, there are companies like Goldman Sachs that are actually betting on how you will do in the world. If you have kids that are growing up, going to school, if you're worried about your 401k or your retirement at all, you're going to want to understand what this economic reset, the Great Reset, and what the World Economic Forum and people like Klaus Schwab are talking about. That's one way to prepare. Number two, vaccines. So Pfizer and Moderna have completed their vaccines and they are being rolled out. Here in the United States, they're going to every single state. But there's a specific amount that are going to each and every state from Pfizer and Moderna. Just for you people who are really worried about the military coming around and vaccinating you, you and your children by force, First, calm down. You at least have six months before anything like that even needs to be worried about. The reason why I say that is because if you go and look at how many vaccines are actually being rolled out to each state, they need to go to a priority list. And the first three priorities start with healthcare workers, nursing homes. Then in the second tier, you have teachers, 
essential workers and you have first responders. In the third tier, that's where you have people with pre-existing conditions. If you do not fit into any of those categories, then you don't have anything to worry about for quite some time because this entire first wave of vaccines is not going to affect you. Now, before you start freaking out, remember that these vaccines were put through an official process called Operation Warp Speed, which by most people's logic means that they are far safer than any other vaccine. Also, in Washington, D.C., if you are above the age of 11, you can consent to a vaccine. That is consent age in Washington, D.C. That even means that at school, as a child over the age of 11 can say, I want the vaccine. They get vaccinated. It gets docked on the parent's insurance, but the insurance companies do not have to actually show on the bill that the child has gotten vaccinated. So if you do get one of those potential side effects, your parents won't even know where it's coming from. So don't worry about it. Nobody's going to narc on you. P.S. Roughly half the physicians in the U.K. are skeptical about the new vaccines, according to PharmaExec.com. Number three, martial law. Is President Donald Trump going to invoke this thing called the Insurrection Act and refuse to leave office? He can, but will he? He definitely can, but will he? People around him are saying, pardon Julian Assange, pardon Edward Snowden, and while you're at it, declare martial law. Martial law, that word that so many people, even though that's a phrase, not a word, so many people are afraid of, but there's other people on the other side of the fence going, how is that any different than the lockdown that's destroying the economy and forcing people to do things that are quite unconstitutional? So let's not be inflammatory here. That's not Donald Trump style. He's very soft-spoken. He doesn't like to rattle cages or offend anybody. And he will even tell you himself this was the most secure election in history, bar none. Even the mainstream media, that fact-checking engine of society, will tell you that this is the most secure election ever. There's not a shred of evidence that there's this thing called voter fraud, Freud, fraud, voter fraud, because you won't hear it anywhere. You won't hear it from Georgia. You won't hear it from Pennsylvania. You're not going to hear it from Wisconsin or Nevada or Arizona or Dominion Voter Systems that uses the SolarWinds Orion platform that was just hacked in the greatest hack in almost all the U.S. history. But don't worry about it. They say it's a baseless conspiracy theory. Well, then why is the SolarWinds logo on your website? Oh, no, no, we took that down. Yeah, but people who are good with computers realize you didn't take it off your source code. Why? Don't worry about it. You guys are nitpicking and splitting hairs here. It doesn't really matter. What we're really talking about is there was no such thing as voter fraud. Even though there's more dead people that voted in this election than last election. That's odd. Um, there's also this idea that all the absentee ballots, there's more absentee ballots in certain places, certain regions, than there were actual voters. But... All, again, we're splitting hairs here. There's not a single shred of evidence. Why? Because Snopes tells us. We can trust Snopes. We can trust the Washington Post. And come on, martial law, pfft, maybe. Number four, Bitcoin. Bitcoin rallied up to almost $25,000 over the weekend. That's the highest it has ever been, bar none. Back in 2017, it rallied up to $20,000 before it dropped down to around $3,000. People were freaking out and all of a sudden it steadily climbed and it had its biggest rally within the past couple weeks. Something interesting is going on. Is this a safe bet? Do you want to put your money into Bitcoin and that way you think it'll be safer in 2021. Well, there are a lot of people who are saying this is the way of the future, but it's a long haul. You don't put it in and then try and pull your money out in two weeks, even two years, and try and live off that money. This is something for the future, for trading. But there are a lot of people who are saying there's a Bitcoin bubble and it's about to pop. Who do you trust? In a world where there's so much misinformation and disinformation, who do you really trust? Well, Here's what I would say. You hear about diversifying. Well, diversify maybe a little bit, if you can, into any kind of cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, Ethereum, 
do your research. But then if you want to diversify, have some cash, have some in a retirement plan, have some in a bond, have some in a shoebox under your bed. Put some of that into assets, things that actually retain their value. Try and use some of that money to buy some food, maybe store some food away for 2021. I'm not saying something big is going to happen, but if you take a look at what happened in 2020, big things have already happened. Is it a stretch to think that 2021 won't bring more big things? So what about storing some food? Maybe some ready straws so you can, I don't know, filter some water if things get tight. What if there's a power outage? What if this entire cybersecurity um, hack that we noticed just a week ago is going to get bigger and bigger. Like if you go back to July 8th in 2020, the World Economic Forum is saying that the cybersecurity thing is going to dwarf the pandemic. So it's not a stretch to believe that 2021 can bring some kind of a bigger crisis. But here's the thing. If you want to diversify, diversify in all those things. Gold, fine. Cash, fine. Crypto, fine. Assets, yeah, that's fine. But the number one thing that holds value is you, your unique genius, the beauty that you could bring to a community. If there's a community around and you have a skill, whatever that skill might be, even if it's telling jokes or crocheting or building stuff, playing music, whatever it is, your unique genius in a community is going to be of utmost value. So I say no matter what, even if you're going to try and jump from this job to that job, learn to get more into the digital realm, you and your unique genius are going to be more valuable than anything else you can throw your money into. I guarantee you. This brings me to number five, diet and lifestyle. I mean it. If you're worried about the pandemic, if you're worried about uh, Generation X, the life expectancy being lower than their parents, because yes, that did happen. But remember, we are sedentary. We are highly sanitary. We're always rubbing all the microbes off of our skin and our bodies and taking antibiotics and in a sense, killing microbial life. This is why I want to talk about food. Grow your own food. It's not just an interesting pastime. When you touch the earth, there's microbes. In that microbial diversity, remember, in a teaspoon of soil, there are more microbes than there are people on this planet. Our health, if you listen to people like Zach Bush, comes directly from the biodiversity in our gut. Not just microbes, but mycelia. There's even things that he's talking about in there like in the brain for Alzheimer's patients. You will find that candida actually starts to form some kind of mycelial network to repair the damage. But the damage is not from anything microbial. The damage is actually trying to be repaired by the microbes. The damage is coming from our environment. We are sanitizing ourselves too much. We are sedentary far too much. We're not moving around in nature enough. We're not getting enough sun. For Christ's sake, go out and hug somebody. There's actually oxytocin that gets released. This is good for you. Everything that we're being told about health by the officials is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Who am I? No, I don't have any letters behind my name. I don't have any of these credentials, but we are in the information age. And I study this like there is no tomorrow. And I will say that the WHO, even the CDC, a lot of the things that they're saying about lockdowns and quarantines, they're not being followed. Even they're saying these are last resorts, last resorts, and it's still not being followed. So if you still don't feel like there is some, I don't know, push or decades old agenda to, in a sense, crush the economy and usher us into a brand new digital trace and track tokenized age, Again, you haven't watched Esoteric Agenda 1, you probably haven't watched Esoteric Agenda 2, and you probably haven't gone to www.benjosephstewart.com and signed up for my mailing list where I give you all of this free information. I want to thank you guys once again. Please listen out. 
for these five aspects. I'm giving you five aspects of awakening a few episodes ago, five things to be aware of for 2021. I'm going to try and give you as many of these types of tips and tricks to remember to keep yourself afloat, help you along your spiritual path, and to remind you that we are living in a world full of abundance. Your best bet is to bet on yourself. I mean it. I want to thank you all again. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share this out across many platforms, and stick around for the next episode of Waking Infinity News.